Hello there and welcome to this week's Granny's Garden. Now last week we finished the actual structure of the two terraces and now it's time to start planting, just start planting. These terraces as you can see are really really long, they're on two levels so I've got two really really long sections and they take up hundreds of plants so I'm definitely in no rush to do it, bit by bit, but I want to get a start. So the idea is I'm going to show you plant by plant what I've got selected and where I'm going to put it and the reasoning behind it. I've also got things on order for this autumn, like bulbs and daffodils and peonies and things like that. But the first ones I want to get in now, just so I can see something, just something. So let's turn the camera around and I'm going to show you what I've got. Now the first one I have here is Japanese maple. You all know I love Japanese maples, they do very well for me in this garden. And I was looking for one that instead of being open like the, the Bihu or the Sangokaku or the Shindesheho, that was going to have a nice goblet upright shape and uh, behaviour. So this is Butterfly. Again, it's got these beautiful little leaves that are green edged with pink and it'll have its gorgeous autumn colours as well. So this is going to go on the upper part of the terrace towards the end. Also towards the end, I've got the little holly bush. This <laughs> actually formed part of one of my Christmas decorations. It was a tiny, teensy little thing. I repotted it up in spring. And it's now growing, as you can see, there's nice bit of growth there now on the top. It looks like it's going to flower as well, so fantastic. And it is going to go the other side of this, up at the top towards the woodshed. Now the next thing I've got are four climbing roses. I'm going to need a lot more than four, but for the moment this is what I could get my hands on. Oops, ants. This is what I could get my hands on, and they urgently need to get into the ground. They've been several weeks now sat in a pot, and they need the ground right now. Um, I've got different varieties. I'm not going to space them easily. I'm going to be spacing them according to the spread when they're mature. Now the first one is Allegro. This has got a, like a bright, uh, a dark cherry pink colour. It's got more than 100 petals on the flower and its eventual spread is small. It's like between 1.5 metres to 2 metres tall and wide. So that's the first one to go in. Now the next one here is Papi del Bard. This is an interesting one. Its spread is big. It's between 2.5 to 3 meters spread. Its flowers are pink, orange and apricots and its flowers are big. 5 to 6 inches across. That means they're quite heavy and it tends to droop. Now that isn't an attribute if I had a shrub rose I'd be looking for, but when you're looking for something that's on a height, and this is really on a height, remember the top level here is high, to have a flower that sort of looks down at you as you walk by is an attribute that you'll be looking for in this particular case. Papi del Bard, absolutely love it. Pink, apricot and orange flowers. Beautiful. Now the next one is Blanche Colomb. Blanche Colomb again is uh, one of the vigorous ones. It's 2.5 to 3 metres tall and wide. It's got a beautiful flower, so like white with a slight little pink tinge there in the middle. And it's a very abundant flower and also very sturdy. And the last one here is Palais Royal, the royal white, although it's royal white with a little tinge of pink there. So not completely white, but beautiful, very abundant flower, slightly less vigorous. It's got a maximum of about two meters, which is about six foot and can't wait to get it in the ground. So I've got sort of like the, the pink and the apricot pink and then I've got the two whitish ones. I'm going to be sort of like spacing them according to colors. And hopefully when autumn comes, I'll be able to get the same types in bare root, which is a lot easier to, to find and continue all the way to the end. I want them to touch, but not to be crossing because I don't want, I don't like congested plants, especially congested roses. It leaves them open to all sorts of infection and disease. I need that air circulation. I need them clean. So this is the way we're going to go. So I'm going to start planting those in a very few minutes. Now let's get on to the next group of plants. Now the next thing I've got are hydrangeas. In actual fact I've got eight hydrangeas, two different varieties. I've got four bubbles and four diamond rouge. Both varieties have been selected for the more compact behaviour because some hydrangeas, let's face it, can get to be like six to eight foot tall or sometimes even taller and I need something more compact because behind I want, definitely want to see those climbing roses and these varieties are going to be evenly spaced, leaving a lot of room between. I'm not looking for a hedge, I'm looking for evenly spaced repetition of colour the whole way along the top terrace, leaving room between the plants to plant other things. Well, as you can see, they're all laid out now. Regarding roses, I've calculated I'm going to need about six to seven more. There will be a cut-off point roughly where the actual pine tree is because from there on in it gets a lot shadier and they'll grow but they won't flower as much and 
let's face it, everybody grows a climbing rose for the roses, not for the leaves. So uh, definitely going to be a cut-off point there. And of course, I've got my uh, Asar Hapanes, the Japanese maple, and uh, the holly in the more shady area. So that's absolutely fine for them, but not for the roses. Uh, as you can see, although there's a lot of plants here already, there's lots and lots of room for more. I'm going to be softening the structure over time, planting trailing perennials that will just fall over both sides and really, really soften that hard edge. And of course, there's always the petunias, the annuals that trail and do a fantastic job every year to bring a nice bright pop of colour and softness at the same time. So lots of work to do. Now I want to get a spade out. I'll get my husband to get the spade out, actually. Uh, let him do the spade work and I'll come in afterwards and plant them. But for the moment, from me, I'll see you all next week here in Granny's Garden. Bye-bye now. Climbing is 